Not another Turkish shotgun. Box fed. Yep. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load, and this is the Derya or Deya, however you want to say it, Mark 12 box fed shotgun. Just have a look at that for a second. Pretty nice looking shotgun, as all box fed shotguns are, pretty much. This one is a little dirty from testing. <sighs> Where do we start with this one? More or less, throw out some specs. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load. You know who we are. You know what we're about by now. Throwing out the reviews, keeping them coming. So, first of all then, I'll throw out some specs on the Durian Mark 12. Basically, semi-automatic gas-operated shotgun. Uh, 12 bore, uh, two and three quarter inch uh, and three inch chamber. Uh, capacity, mag capacity, and I'll talk in a lot more detail shortly about that. And you are supplied with these three magazines that you can see. Two rounder, five rounder, and a 10 rounder, okay? Uh, 24 inch barrel to meet UK laws. Uh, multi choke, so you get all your chokes as well. I'll show you them shortly. Um, adjustable length of pull, because you've got like an AR-15 style um, stock. Uh, length of pull is adjustable from 11, just referring to my notes, 11 and a quarter, sorry, 11 and three quarter inches to 15 inches. Overall length is 41 inches. Weight is three and a half kilos. And these are around 950 quid here in the UK, 950 pounds. 10 round mags are 50 pounds a piece. Okay, let's put my notes down. So yeah, so what separates this thing then and makes it different to say the Typhoon, uh, the WebTac, what other box feds have I done on this channel? God, I've lost count. The Raider, the Hatsam Raider, that was pretty cool. Well, it's slightly different gas operating system to say, uh, for example, the Typhoon, the uh, Typhoon Defense Industries uh, F-12. Um, I have owned one of them. I've not got it no more, guys. I've sold it. Um, but slightly different to that as far as uh, working's concerned. Now, I'm sort of jumping ahead here um, as far as sort of stripping this thing down and showing you the guts. I ain't gonna do it because it's a nightmare. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna show you the uh, manual instead. You know what I'm like, guys, at doing any kind of field strip on camera, it just doesn't happen. So I'm just gonna, so, uh, this will also explain how this thing works a little bit better. So I've got the manual here, which I'll show you more in detail uh, later on in the video. But this is, I find it a little bit of, um, I don't know, um, how can I put it politely? Bit of ball ache, basically. Um, bit of a bony ass job, really, to strip this thing down. That's why I ain't gonna do it. It would be so nice if they come up with a box fed magazine. I'm just getting a gripe out here, by the way, guys. It'd be so so much nice if they come out with a box fed mag, a box fed mag shotgun, where although it does strip a little bit like um, an AR-15, it'd just be so good if it did strip like an AR-15, as in you crack it open, the upper from the lower, and everything comes out that way. Unfortunately, everything, and I guess it was like on the, I think I think the Typhoon did, well, most of it did anyway, you had to take off the fore end and, oh, well, you didn't have to take off it, take it off, but all the, some of the, most of the guts come out of the fore end. You'll see what I mean, I'm, I'm doing too much waffling. Basically, remove the mag, um, and then basically what you do is unscrew the barrel shroud, um, pull the fore end off basically uh, and then all this sort of bits and pieces come off there the piston and everything then you break uh, the upper from the lower and then you you know unscrew all the gas uh, well you unscrew the gas retaining knot uh, remove the split ring and then the piston and then the piston will basically come out then um, <sighs> guys look <laughs> It's just a bit of a faff, um, in my opinion, anyway. But 
it's flipping reliable so you shouldn't really have to do that very often because it, it stays pretty clean uh, because I believe the the gas ports on this and not too far um, sort of down the barrel as opposed to other um, shotguns that work like this basically um, I mean I've put well my uh, editor my sort of boss because uh, I write for shooting sports magazine uh, he done a review on this actual shotgun um, and he put he pumped quite a lot of ammo through this and it doesn't look that dirty to be fair um, and I've I pushed I don't know about 200 rounds through this bit of everything really um, and you know it's not it's not mega dirty so but anyway let's get on to the actual um, talking about the the actual gun itself well in fact we'll, we'll talk about the magazines first so 10 round magazine let's put one of them in first just for just to give this thing a bit of bit of a look about it now you may have noticed something a little bit different about this shotgun already when you compare it to the typhoon and it's going to get a mega thumbs up from me straight away you can change the charging handle to lefty. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> basically, see that groove there? You can, let me just close the bolt. I've got the mag in, I need to set the mag in. I'm doing it all backwards. See what I mean guys, this is why I don't strip uh, guns down on camera. It's just, well I try not to anyway. The charging handle will pull out like that and it's on um, I don't know if you'd be able to see it it's on like a little ball bearing just see it through there it's on a ball bearing which is really cool because it basically just pull, pulls out dead easy and you can switch it round then to the other side and then you've got uh, left hand charging the typhoon f12 don't have that uh, nor does any other box fed that i've used to date so that is an absolute win if you're a lefty to be fair i did swap it around like that as you can see in the footage uh, but if you're like me you're that used to um if you you know being a lefty that you're that used to using um right hand bolts then it probably actually feel weird sort of using it like that so but no well i kind of got used to it it's quite nice but uh, i didn't really want to get too used to it because manufacturers don't really uh go that way for us uh for, for us lefties so but yeah that is uh, a real cool fe feature that i like about this shotgun Anyway, talking about the magazines, 10 round mags, these are 50 pound a piece, so they ain't cheap if you're doing PSG or three gun, you know, and you're gonna need obviously quite a few more of these. Um, just bear that in mind. Um, they are um, all steel, pretty solid. I mean, most of the um, shotgun magazines, box fed shotgun magazines are, they're all pretty much the same. I mean, I haven't got typhoon shotgun um anymore so i've not got the magazines to try in it but looking at them um they all generally sort of fit so it might be worth you know i don't know seeing which is your cheapest option i don't know uh, i think they are to be fair all all around the same sort of price but yeah magazines um like all sort of shotgun magazines <laughs> can be a bit tough to to load I did notice on this particular shotgun, uh, on this Dura, yet, the, these didn't really drop free. Um, I noticed on like the Typhoon I had, you press the mag release and those mags did sort of just drop free. Gravity, it, you know, let them just drop out. On these, they need a bit of a bit of a pull. Um, so yeah, that's a 10 rounder, you know, what can I say? little stiff you know when no 
it is what it, it is what it is polymer bottom on them so pretty tough pretty tough then you've got your five rounder um i to be honest would use that for say if i was doing sort of long range slug you know throw a bipod on this thing um that'd be ideal for sort of throwing in um slug you know to do a bit of slugging uh, off a bipod you know because then that magazine isn't sort of hindering you unless you cut a hole in the floor or in the bench um, and then you've got the two rounder um, two rounder I don't know what you're going to do really with that take this in clay shooting or pheasant shooting you imagine rocking up pheasant shooting with that let's put this thing in I've not actually put this thing in I think it'll run flush almost no it's not far off no, it looks alright to be fair what would you use that for? I don't know. Um, let's put the uh, put the five rounder and see what that. You see that looks better. Put that. In. Throw in that. Throw in that ten, just for good measure. Let's. I tell you what. Let's put the. We'll put the. No, in fact, we'll leave them out while I get talk about this thing. So anyway, going from the top, then guys. That's sort of 10 minutes of me just waffling on. So, nice sort of soft rubber uh, recoil pad. Pretty cool pattern on that as well. I do like that. And then you've got adjustable, uh, obviously ambidextrous. Um, you've got an adjustable uh, cheek piece there, all polymer. So it won't be freezing cold on your cheek. Uh, there's your adjustment. Um, quite a bit of adjustment there. It is a little bit stiff, but that had, that had wear in. AR-15 style sort of buffer tube there, so you know you could swap that out, that stock out for sort of pretty much anything you want. Um, moving on to the pistol grip, soft rubber reminds me of the F12. In fact, it looks almost identical to the uh, Typhoon F12 uh, pistol grip, AR style, so you can swap that. Uh, to whatever you want if needs be um, aircraft aluminium um, upper and lower uh, sort of um, in like a matte finish really really quite nice you do get um, sort of they're not Magpul but they are Magpul style sort of emboss uh, sights pop up sights uh, so that's cool I know on the F12 they are an extra or at least they were when i bought mine not bad not bad i mean you're gonna throw on a red dot or something like that chances are you are if you're doing sort of psg three gun or whatever what i did notice uh, because this is a slightly different uh gas operating system to like the f12 on the f12 i was always wary of sort of getting my my pinky in one of these little holes where you could actually see the piston um, moving basically this is enclosed so when I operate the bolt I mean on an F12 when I sort of pull the bolt back and forth you'd see all that moving in there but it is contained um, well you can see a bit of it um, moving but I don't know the front portion I, uh, on the F12 it was like everything was moving in there whereas on this well there is a bit then I kind of stand corrected there I didn't really notice it as much though on on this as uh, the F12 um, but anyway as a precaution don't don't get your little pinkies in the holes because you're liable to get the ends chopped off um, Quad rail, sort of Picatinny rail on the um, fore end. Um, this has got like an extra sort of like Magpul um, grip on it, um, fore end grip. But you've got this quad rail, so you can put pretty much whatever you want on there. Um, what I do like about uh, the Duryea is the way they've sort of put this polymer bit uh, on here. Uh, just to sort of make it a bit more comfortable if you want your hand back in this sort of um, position as opposed to sort of up here uh, that's that's pretty nice yeah i know on the f12 you've almost got like a 
it's sort of molded into the well I say molded it, um, it's sort of in the magazine uh, well lower the lower part of the uh, receiver it's almost like there's um, a hand grip if that makes sense I'll throw in a picture if I've got one um, but no I like that it's, it's pretty ergonomic um, looking at the magazine well itself let's just open the bolt as you can sort of see it is a bit dirty guys so excuse that so there's your mag well um, trigger is a little bit heavy uh, we'll give it a pull actually now while I've got that bolt open actually there is your bolt release this side uh, I weren't so keen on that if I'm honest I found it sticks out just a little bit and it was pretty damn stiff trying to press it um, almost better to sort of just whack it with a palmy hand like that um, that was just me uh, but let's give it a pull I'll get my trigger pull gauge out that I've not got set up you know, typical rack and load fashion not prepared at all but um, yeah I like it I mean I threw quite a bit of ammo through this I found compared to some of the uh, box fed shotguns that I've used it was pretty soft on recoil um, whether that's the you know the way it operates I don't know um, I, was, I was using sort of varied loads so to speak um, but yeah um, it, you know it was, it was comfortable to shoot pretty comfortable to shoot I, I do like the way you can swap that to the other side right let's give this trigger a pull uh, it is pretty heavy I, mean, I think I pulled that a bit too hard. Ten pounds. Let's give let's give that another one, guys. Just just for, to be fair. Right. Okay, let's give it another one. Oh. Nine pounds, thirteen ounces. Pete Moore in his review in uh, Shooting Sports Magazine, he was pulling it at about eight pounds. Maybe that's my trigger pull gauge, I don't know. It's a heavy trigger anyway, guys. The trigger itself um, is quite nice. Quite like the blade on it um, compared to the Typhoon. Typhoon, you've got the straight blade. Um, yeah, I like it. Um, some people love them, some people hate them. I'm not really fussed to be, if I'm honest, I'd probably prefer a rounded uh, trigger. Um, that's just me. Um, but yeah, you know, it is what it is. It's, to be fair, in my experience with box fed shotguns, ugh, there's no point in being a trigger snob because you're just going to be, you're going to be holding on to one of these things for dear life anyway, as you sort of empty in a 10 round magazine. So you can pretty much yanking that trigger anyway, especially when you're against the clock. It's not like you're doing sort of precision long range shooting with this thing. Um, but no, I like the trigger. Um, while we talk about controls, um, mag release, I've already kind of mentioned that, that is your mag release. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. A little bit stiff. Um, the safety catch, sort of standard AR safety catch. Um, uh, a little bit small, if you ask me. Um, so that's on. That's on safe there, and that's on pew. Um, I'd like that a little bit bigger. Um, I guess you could sort of swap it out um, to a bigger one maybe an ambi one as well you know uh, that would work work in my favor i guess uh what haven't we covered moving up front moving up to the, let me just move some of my junk out of the way uh like i said long barreled sort of meet uk law i have got my uh, true lock door buster on there it doesn't come with that um i just threw that on you know just to just for looks more than anything um but yeah I like it, I do like it. Um, 
I think the F12 um, Maxi is a bit better looking, I think, because it's it's got like the longer forehand. Um, and I'm not a great fan of quad rail, you know, because you, do you ever use all this rail here? Not really, um, but that's just me. I mean, you know, whatever. It is a cool, cool shotgun. Um, you know, I've not put as much ammo through it as I'd like, to be fair, because I'm kind of on a bit of a time limit with this thing reviewing it. But the sheer fact that you can swap the um, the bolt handle round to lefty is so cool, so cool. I really do like that. Um, you know, it's just a a cool factor if you're a lefty like me. Um, but yeah, not not a bad shotgun at all. Let me uh, show you the um, the manual anyway. Uh, now well, I did sh sort of show you it earlier, just on the strip down. Cause like I said, I ain't doing that on camera. Nice manual, if if I'm honest. Um, that looks cool in that configuration. That looks really nice. Bit short for UK by the looks of it. Um, so yeah, let's look through the manual. All your sort of usual safety do's and don'ts and whatnot. And then there's your strip down um, instructions because you do need them. Good luck doing that in the field if you have a bit of a problem. Uh, you're going to lose bits, am I guessing? Um, basically, all your operating, uh, you know, do's and don'ts and uses of chokes. And then what I do like is a exploded diagram, lots of them. Big fan of them now. Um, you sort of see them in every sort of uh, manual of new, uh, new guns and stuff. You know, a lot of manufacturers are doing that. I do like to see this now in the manual. It's really cool. Uh, that's the wrench that you get, the, the all round sort of wrench that does everything. Um, I'll show you that. And there's Deer's. Uh, Factory by the looks of it, or HQ. So yeah, not a bad um, manual. I'll show you. Sorry guys, just uh, running out of room here. Comes with a hard case, which is cool. So you get a nice hard case with it, um, as you'd expect. Um, but saying that, I'm pretty sure the Typhoon doesn't come with a hard case anymore, which is ah, not cool, I don't think, you know. They're your chokes anyway, um, so it comes with your, your selection of chokes basically, and I'll show you the, the wrench. So there's your wrench for like the, the castle nut and the fore end, and there's your actual uh, cho uh, choke key there, which is cool. So that's yeah, that's cool, you know. But yeah, it's I don't know. I'm I'm pretty sure the Typhoon doesn't come with the hard case, and uh, I think I think they've stopped doing it with a hard case, which that'd annoy me if I was in the market for one. You know, it um, well for me anyway. I mean, I I just like a case with my. Uh, my gun, especially you know, I don't know. It's just it's just nice to have one. You know, you you want more, more and more for your money these days, don't you? We work hard, guys. You know, you want what's a polymer case? Come on, seriously. When you're spending like nearly a grand on a on a gun, but yeah, all in all, a pretty cool shotgun. Uh, I love, like I said, I, me being a lefty. I love the fact that you can switch uh, that bolt handle round to lefty. I do like that. Only gripe uh, is I'm, I'm not so keen on the um, the bolt release handle. I just think that's a bit. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not keen. Just not keen on it. Uh, sling swivels. Uh, or oh, sling swivels. Sling loop there if that's what you want to call it one there as well um i've never actually seen anyone with a sling on one of these if i'm honest um but yeah all in all a pretty cool shotgun um yeah 
Um, nice, nice looking shotgun. I mean, they, they're great looking at the end of the day. Box fed shotguns are, but uh, but yeah, it's it's another option for you guys. You know, if you're indecisive over the, you know, the Do Your Mark 12 or the Hassan Raider or the God, what else is there? The Web Tac. Oh, I did like the Web Tac. I was, I was quite impressed with that. Typhoon F12. You know, um, lots to choose from, guys. You know, it's uh, it's box fed city out there uh, as far as shotguns go um but yeah so it gets my thumbs up anyway to do it performed well it was reliable uh, nice and soft on recoil um just i think that it would happen in time um just the the mags didn't sort of drop out um you know with gravity so if you're against the clock you kind of need that you don't want to be you don't want to be sort of re yanking out your magazine whilst fumbling for another one you just want to hit that and be grabbing fresh one you know while that one's falling back down to earth but hey ho it is what it is but anyway guys that is it that is your rack and load review of the Duryea or Daya however you want to say it I'm going to say Duryea Mark 12 um, box fed gas operated semi-automatic shotgun another turkish one uh i like it um but just not so keen on the stripping down of it so anyone who's developing a box fed shotgun out there do one like a proper ar-15 where you can just break the upper from the lower and just take everything out that way that's all i'm going to say on that anyway that is your rack and load review thanks for watching that's rack and load see ya And it's nice, quite soft on the recoil. Really quite nice. Ten rounds goes quick.